Good morning, everybody. Welcome to worship. We're so glad you're here. Uh, thank you for being with me today, Bethany, from home. Um, we are um, trying to bat away the, it is that we had this golden moment of outdoor weather, when it was warm enough, but before the bugs. And now I'm having to make war with the bugs, but I am going to own my back porch here. And we're still going to, we're going to still move forward with this. Um, I would like to invite everybody who is watching from home, whether it's on Facebook or YouTube, to uh, give us a like at this time. If you consider yourself to be at worship with us, whether it's live or you're watching this later, uh, it just helps us know uh, who, who is with us here and uh, who is uh, celebrating this Ascension Sunday. Uh, so the Easter season is drawing to a close and we're getting ready for Pentecost. And so uh, we're going to continue um, with worship in this way for some time. Uh, so this will continue to be offered to you. And um, it's also Memorial Day weekend. And so uh, from us to you and from me to you, I certainly want to say if you uh, have served before in the past, or if you uh, have a family member who has served, or if you have lost somebody in an armed conflict, I just want to say uh, we thank you and we are with those who are grieving. And uh, I'm going to lift up this prayer now. Eternal God, we give thanks for all those who have shown the greatest love by laying down their lives for others. We especially thank you for those in our military throughout history who have sacrificed their lives for their fellow citizens and for us who came after. As we remember their service, keep us mindful of all those for whom this day is a burden and send your spirit of comfort to them. Be present with all the women and men who are serving in the military today. Though they are at war, let them live for the peace known only from you. Help us to be worthy of their legacy and keep us mindful of their service, that in all things we may live our lives in praise and thanksgiving to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. And now as we enter into our liturgy, let's take a deep breath and prepare ourselves to be in God's presence this morning. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perf perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 And now we're going to share the peace 
with our friends and with our family and with one and all, with those in your household. We invite you to share the peace with one another. If you would like now to send a text or a message or an email or a phone call to somebody and just share God's peace with them, we invite you to do it now. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Bethany, God's peace be with you. Peace be with you, Pastor. And with your uh, daughter and grandkids and, and, and everybody. God peace be with the family. And we continue with our gathering song. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your only Son was taken into the heavens and in your presence intercedes for us. Receive us and our prayers for all the world, and in the end, bring everything into your glory through Jesus Christ, our Sovereign and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our reading today comes from the book of Acts, and Luke is writing, In this first book, Theophilus, I wrote to you all of the things that Jesus had taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up into heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit 
to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appealing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized by the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or the periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up at the heavens? This Jesus, who has been taken up, to, up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be. be to God. The Holy Gospel, according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the eleven and those with them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. You are my witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And he, they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple, blessing God. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And we continue with our children's sermon. Okay, team, so we just heard the story of Jesus' ascension. Can somebody raise their hand and tell me what does it mean to ascend? Rex, have you got it? What does it mean to ascend? Rise again. Yeah, ascend means to go up. That's why I have my special uh, theme in the background here today of the clouds. Because ascension means that Jesus went up. He went up into heaven. All right. Um, and he told his disciples to be something for him. Do you remember what he said? Be good. Not just be good. It was just guess. Yeah, it was a guess, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's usually what he says, right? Yeah, be good, like E.T., right? No, Jesus told his disciples to be his witnesses. So raise your hand if you know what a witness is. Like if, you, if you've ever watched like a TV show with a trial as a witness. Uh, Jonah, tell me what a witness is. Another thing for a witness is like you were an, uh, an eyewitness and you saw someone do something, sort of like in yeah. a mystery show or something. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. An eyewitness is somebody who saw somebody do something. And usually it's somebody else. So if you're telling a story about you doing something, um, that's one thing. But if you're telling a story about someone else doing something, you are a witness to what they did. Yeah. So like if I'm a witness at a trial, then I say, I saw Jonah run out of that bank with a whole bunch of money. 
right? <laughs> um, and then I would be a witness and they would say, okay, you're going to jail, right? I think you'd be a liar. I, yeah, I wouldn't say that because I've never seen you rob a bank and I don't think you're going to. <laughs> but anyway, um, that's what a witness is. A witness talks about something that they saw. And if they didn't see it, if they weren't somebody who saw it, then they're not a good witness, right? So when Jesus tells us that we should be witnesses to what he has done, then what should we do? What's a good way of witnessing to things that Jesus has done? We should believe in him, you said? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's a good start. Yeah. Like how he turned water into wine? Sure, yeah. So when you tell stories about things Jesus has done, we can sort of tell stories and say, there's a, sto we, we're, there's a story we've heard that Jesus told to turn water into wine. So that's that's a way of witnessing to him. Sure. Uh, uh, Jonah, do you have something else? Um, and also maybe like, um, you don't have to witness God do this. You don't have to witness God do something. You just sort of have to believe it. Sure, yeah. You know, so you can think, say things that you believe about God. Um, mm -hmm. But another part of witnessing is remembering that Jesus does things in our lives all the time, too. But we don't always notice that it's Jesus. Yeah. So something that I thought was really cool that happened this week um, is that we had a friend just completely surprise us out of the blue and she brought us candy and snacks and all sorts of really awesome stuff. And I felt like Jesus was really taking care of us uh, through the nice thing that that friend did. Have you ever had something like that happen? <laughs> Lars has. He knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. So that's another way that we can witness to Jesus is not just by telling stories about what happened to the past, but also telling stories about things that happened to us where we realize, hey, I, maybe God was taking care of us there. Or if you had a time where maybe you were really sick and God took care of you and you felt better later, that's another way that we can sort of witness to what God is doing. Right? Does that make sense? Yeah. All yeah. right. Yeah. All right, so we're going to pray about being witnesses to Jesus. So uh, everybody unmute, and we're going, to, we're going to pray real quick, okay? All right, repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus thank you, thank for, you everything for everything that you do, that you do in our lives. In our lives. Help us, Help us to notice it. To know know to it it and tell somebody. And tell somebody. Amen. 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 When I was a kid, I liked school well enough, but there was always come the last couple of weeks of school, and it was the best and the worst time of year. Of course, it was the best because it was beautiful outside. You could go out to recess with no coat on. Most of the classwork was done, and it was getting easier. But it was the worst because of the anticipation. You were counting down the days, the hours, the minutes, the seconds until three o'clock on that last day when you're free. It was the remembering the epic awesomeness that was last summer and anticipating the greatness that's going to be this summer. Sadly, that's not the place where a lot of our kids are now, the days, I don't know about your house, but our days in our house are kind of running together and they don't have camp or other family trips to look forward to. But those closing days of school should be those days of remembering and anticipating. And I think the Christian life is much the same way. Remembering and anticipating are two really big parts of the Christian life. We remember Jesus, who he is, what he did for us, what he taught, how he lived. And we anticipate, just as the angels say in our text from Acts, that in the same way that he has ascended, he will come back. It's a core belief. I don't know exactly what it's going to look like. 
But I know and I believe that he will come again to judge the living and the dead. And so the Christian life has been lived for 2,000 years in this in-between time. We know that Jesus is present in some ways, but he's not present in the same way that he was at the Last Supper with his disciples or in the way that he one day will be when we feast with him in eternity. We are in those times in between the empty tomb and that final feast, and we remember and we anticipate. And in this time, Jesus gives us a blessing. He blesses us both with his presence and with his absence. There's a really neat chapter from Mark Allen Powell's book, Loving Jesus, about the blessing of Jesus' presence, but also of his absence. And I think it's worth talking about. I know I talk a lot about Jesus' presence. You hear it from me all the time. So we know that Jesus is present every time two or more are gathered in his name. Whether it's online or in person, Jesus is present. He's present when we share his word and hear his word. He's present when we have communion. He's present when uh, we help the poor and feed the hungry and clothe the naked and visit the sick or imprisoned or welcome the neighbor. All those places are places where Jesus has promised to be present where he says I'm with you always to the end of the age and we believe that he is but he has also promised and he has also blessed us with his absence because we know that we are not present with him and he is not present to us in the exact same way that he was when he was walking around with his disciples in Galilee or when he was feeding the 5,000. He was present to them in a different way and he will be present to us in a different way when he returns. And so when we talk about the blessing of Jesus's presence but also his absence, there's a couple of things that we think about. There's a couple of things that occur to me when I think about what a blessing it is that Jesus withdrew and that for now we have to see him by faith and not by sight. We have to believe that he's present with us. So the first blessing of Jesus' absence is that it makes us impatient. It makes us impatient with the world as it is. So Jesus is still going up into heaven. His disciples can still see him when they hear these angels' voice saying, Men of Galilee, why do you stand there looking up into the sky? Clearly, God does not intend for us to be just staring up into the sky endlessly. It doesn't happen for very long. Pretty soon, they go back into Jerusalem and the Holy Spirit comes and it's time for the church to get moving. Because in the book of Acts, what we see is that the church never passes by somebody who's sick or hungry or oppressed or excluded or in need. And they never just pass them by and say, you know what? Jesus is going to come down and help you. You just hang tight. No, they feed, they teach, they witness, they help, they love, they act like Jesus acted, the way he taught them to act. They act as though they are, in fact, Jesus' body in the world because Jesus doesn't have any other body in the world right now than the church who does what he did and who acts like he acted and who teaches and witnesses to what he taught. So they don't let any grass grow under them. They get going and they do what Jesus told them to do, which was to be his witnesses to the very ends of the earth. I think we get a little bit too patient sometimes with the status quo, with the old normal of the way things were before the pandemic. War. Greed. Racism. Political partisan games. The old normal wasn't that great, and we were too patient with it. And then all of a sudden you have a pandemic, and a hundred thousand people in our country lose their lives. And it gives us an opportunity as we're sitting there watching it unfold to take stock 
and to ask ourselves, I wonder if Christians were maybe a little bit too patient with the world as it is. I wonder if Christians, if you'll forgive the cliche, should be paying attention to that quote from Mahatma Gandhi, that we need to be the change we wish to see in the world. I wonder if we spend a little bit too, many, too, too much time with our eyes on the skies and whether we should hear the voice from those angels, why do you stand looking up in the sky? Because Jesus will indeed come back. We believe it. We preach it. But he's not back now. And we are his body. So batter up, church. It's time to love like he loved. It's time to act like he acted. And the other blessing that comes from Jesus' absence is that he gives us patience with the work that we are tasked with doing. It's a little maddening because the last order that Jesus gives to his disciples before he ascends, stay put, hang in there, don't leave Jerusalem. He doesn't give into too many specifics. He doesn't tell them too many specifics about what's going to happen, but he says you'll be clothed with power from on high. This is the promise of the Father. And the book of Acts recounts that, in fact, the Holy Spirit did come. But for the time being, they have to wait. They have to be patient until God is the one who, acted, who acts. And I have to tell you, that is a hard commandment from Christ to hear right now, although I relate to it. You know, the disciples had families. They had lives, lives, sorry. They had livelihoods. They had jobs to get back to. And Jesus is commanding them to hang tight, to stay put, and to just wait. One of my favorite psalms is Psalm 130 that says, I wait for the Lord, I, for him my soul waits. I wait for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. And the problem is, it's a beautiful poetic psalm, but it's hard to actually do. It's hard to be patient in doing the things that Jesus has asked us to do. Because there are too many voices in the world that give us impatience with Jesus' way. That start to make us think, you know, maybe turning the other cheek isn't all it's cracked up to be. Maybe being generous, maybe uh, putting the, uh, the needs of others ahead of my own needs, maybe all that stuff isn't going to work the way Jesus said it's going to work. Because we've been witnessing to him for 2,000 years. We've been sharing his stories with our communities. We've been raising our children and telling them to be like Jesus for 2,000 years. And it doesn't feel like the world has gotten much better. It doesn't feel like we're moving the needle by our own actions. And so it's too easy to become impatient and listen to that voice of the world that says, maybe you're being suckers by doing this and continuing to patiently plod along in the way of Jesus. I know that there are voices of impatience in our society today. And it's hard. It's hard work. I read an article a few weeks ago about how our brains are wired to respond to a threat that's imminent and that's right now and that's short-lived. But it's so much harder when a threat lasts for weeks or months or years. It's hard to stay focused. It's hard to stay intentional. It's hard to continue to put our neighbor's needs and others' needs ahead of our own, just like Jesus said that the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. It is hard to hang tight and to be patient in, Jesus, in the way of Jesus and to love our neighbors as ourselves. And I understand that. And I understand, too, this weekend, that it is hard once again, not to be present to one another 
in person. It is really easy to grow impatient, and I'm growing impatient. It is really hard to not to be able to see you and preach to you in person and to have you hear my voice and to rejoice together and praise together. I miss it. I, say, I feel like a broken record. I miss you all terribly. But the fact of the matter is, Jesus has blessed us with his absence in the ascension so that we can be present to one another and care for one another and be there for one another even when we can't be here with one another. It's exhausting. It drives us nuts. And I understand that. And everybody's getting a little stir crazy. I'm getting a little stir crazy too. But to walk in the way of Jesus is to every day to wake up with the intention to love our neighbor as ourselves and to do everything to protect life and to celebrate life and to value life. And we're going to continue to do that. So the blessing of Jesus' absence when Jesus withdrew himself from his disciples and promised to be present in a different way to be present through one another, to be present through the church, to be present through your neighbor, to be present through your siblings in Christ, who someday soon you might be able to see again, but we know still that we've never been alone. You have never been alone in this crisis. The blessing of Jesus' absence helps us to be impatient with the world, way the world is and not to just accept the status quo that the world is always going to be fallen and sinful and crappy and we can't make it any better. But the blessing of Jesus' absence is also a blessing of patience. That, excuse me, that moving out of int intentionality and love for our neighbor is its own reward. We don't have to wait for a reward in heaven in order to know that it's a meaningful way to be, to be there for our brothers and sisters. It's meaningful now. It's just a plain, better way to live. And so as we think about remembering and anticipating in this time, I'm going to share with you a prayer from Reinhold Niebuhr. It's a prayer that's all about uh, anticipation. It's all about patience, but at the same time, impatience. It's one that in 12-step communities is very common, and it's one that I think every Christian should have on their heart and on their lips in this time. God, give us grace to accept with serenity the things that cannot be changed. Courage to change the sh things which should be changed, and the wisdom to distinguish the one from the other. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking, as Jesus did, this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it. Trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will, so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen.
And to our prayers today, we are also adding uh, Bill and Terry. Uh, Bill's sister-in-law uh, died this week. And so we're mourning and praying and uh, hoping in the resurrection with them. With our prayers today, we are uh, especially mindful of the people in our own uh, synod, in our own state, uh, in the Midland area. Um, and we're especially going to be lifting up uh, in our prayers uh, the Reverend David Sprang in Gladwin, who is um, our assistant to the bishop and has also been working with the uh, volunteer fire department. And he's been helping to evacuate people and just uh, doing a lot of, of God's work in our uh, name and in just in the name of his community. So we're pr praying for Pastor Dave and others. Trusting in the new life God gives, let us pray for the church and the world and all of God's creation. Lord Jesus, when you ascended, you promised power from on high. Stir up your Holy Spirit in the church throughout the world. Give us the power to keep sharing your word, the power to give thanks in you in all circumstances, and the power to let you guide us even when we are misled by fear and worry. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayer. Your disciples responded to your ascension with joyful worship. Guide and inspire the worship of all Christian churches, especially as they find ways to adjust to new realities. Be present in the worship of our partner churches, including Prince of Peace Lutheran Church, Portage, and Rachel Meyer Laughlin, their pastor. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayer. Lord Jesus, when you ascended, you drew our eyes to the heavens above. We are thankful for the open sky, the beauty of the sky, and the imaginable vastness of our outer space. Give us humility when we ponder our small part in your creation. Give us wisdom to remember that our individual choices still count. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayer. Yeah. God, you are our refuge and our stronghold. We pray to you for our neighbors in mid-Michigan who have lost their homes to flooding. Protect any who are still in danger. Bless the work of emergency responders in the National Guard. Sit with those who are in despair. Provide for your children who will need to rebuild and to help us lend our hands and hearts in their efforts. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Show your goodness and mercy to all who are sick and suffering, or those suffering in mind, body, or spirit, including Clarine, Evan, Greg, George, Lloyd, Guy, Cooper, Lindsay, Jolene, Allison, Anna, Cher, Emmy, Hal and Gwen, Jack, Katie, Laura, Michelle, Orson, Paula, Sherilyn, Stacy, and those we remember silently at home, your home. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayer. Our prayer. In times of peace and in times of fear, let our praises and prayers reach your ears and your he healing reach our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we believe that you are truly present in the sacrament of the altar, and in the bread and wine, we receive your precious body and your blessed blood. We love you above all things, and our souls thirst for you. We cannot receive you in the sacrament at this time, but we ask you to come to our hearts through your blessed word. You are present in your word, and we receive you as if we were together with all our siblings in Sunday worship. Don't let your presence drift away from us. With great eagerness, we await the moment to be able to eat the bread of life and drink the cup of salvation, your body and blood. Amen. Amen. And now gathered into the one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, in heaven 
hallowed be thy name. Thy, name. thy kingdom come, kingdom. thy will be done, will be done. on earth as it, is in heaven. as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, our daily bread. and forgive us our trespasses, our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the and power, power and the and glory, glory forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. We have a few announcements before we get going. I uh, had advertised we've got a big one coming. And one is that two weeks from today, we are planning a drive-in worship experience. It's going to be a short service. There's going to be a lot of details and a lot of uh, stuff that we need to be aware of, and we will make you aware of that by email and uh, by other means to make sure that everybody knows the deal for our drive-in worship, but we are excited about it. We're excited to see you in some sense face-to-face -face once again, uh, but as I said, online worship is going to continue. That's going to be our weekly phenomenon for, for a while now uh, as we're figuring it out, but we are trying to figure out the logistics of uh, drive-in worship, and we're excited to have you again. Um, we are going to be honoring our uh, graduating seniors, our high school seniors and college seniors, and so we'll share some more information with you about how you can celebrate with them and pray and bless them as, uh, as uh, they enter into an unprecedented, it's, I mean, we are, our prayers really are with them, uh, because it's a really different time to be graduating high school or college. And so we're thinking about them and praying for them during this time. Um, we are going to have Zoom fellowship time at 11 a.m. Right after we're done here, you get a little bit of time to brew some coffee and grab your uh, scone or biscuit or breakfast or whatever you want to do and log in with us. Just let me know uh, or comment uh, on the... Uh, uh, Facebook uh, live post that's that's up and just let us know if you want that uh, link to be part of the Zoom and we'd love to have you with that. Um, I think that's everything. No, Marlene. Oh, that's right. That's right. We are celebrating <laughs> with Marlene Haverman and uh, she has a new great grandson. His name is Logan. He's living in New Hampshire and we're so we're praying thankfulness to God for uh, baby Logan. Um, and I'm thankful to God for uh, Bethany for her assistance because I don't always remember the details. So I'm <laughs> thankful and I'm thankful uh, for you, the people of God. I want, want to let you know just from my heart, I know that this has been hard. It's been hard for me, um, but the church has never closed. We are a church that is has been around long enough to remember and some of you remember before the church ever was a building. And we are at a time where we can't be together in the building and it's been a long time, uh, but we know that the church has never closed and the church is, continues to not be canceled and not to be, you know, not to be, we, we haven't uh, stopped doing God's work. And so we encourage you to continue to be part of that work, continue to tune in, continue to worship, continue to give uh, online or uh, through the mail or, uh, the drive-in, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna collect offering there too, and uh, we encourage everybody to be part of our mission. So thank you for joining us today. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor, and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be Thanks to God. Be to God.